Yeah, my name is Lloyd LeBaron. Uh, we're in Goshen, New York, and we're here to talk about my father's legacy in racing, and we're in his old machine shop. Yeah, well, my father was into racing uh, because of his, his father. And he entered World War II at 18. And when he got out in 45, 46, then he started doing it a lot more. Uh, building his own race cars, machining, custom parts, uh, gearboxes, and basically just his passion in life was racing. Uh, there was a building down in Jersey on Franklin Turnpike, and it was actually behind uh, his parents' house. So he opened up there and had his own little speed shop, uh, building up race cars, uh, hot rodding uh, other cars for, for performance, and just manufacturing just racing parts. He actually got a, a telegram from the Unsers. They used his gearbox at Pikes Peak, and they were winning. Um, they were winning time trials. They were getting the best times with his gearbox. And they thanked him for making such a great piece of equipment. Yeah, they were using it as a marketing tool. Came in with the packages of everything he was selling: uh, flywheels, uh, spindles, um, any kind of machining work that anybody needed for these race cars. He was putting together. Uh, there's only a few stories that I remember, but my father said that uh, Offenhauser actually came to visit him to find out why and how he could make these good gearboxes so cheaply and sell them so cheap and expensively. And did he end up buying? I'm pretty sure he ended up buying one and who knows what he did, but maybe he ran it. I have no idea. I don't have any more information after that. Oh yeah, we have a, a building on the, in Waldwick, New Jersey, and that was going to be our machine shop, and primary focus was the machine shop and still doing speed racing stuff. But we needed also a foundry, because we were, it was hard to get the parts we needed from foundries. So we decided to move here to Goshen when we found out this foundry machine shop was available. And what year did, uh, did you guys make the full move? That would be 75 to 77, somewhere in there we, we did the move. He was making gears for the, the race cars, but then a uh, company near him asked, them, asked him if he could make gears for them. And then when he realized that he was making more money, like tons more money with the, uh, the printing gears, that he slowly stopped doing the stuff for racing because he didn't have the time.
Well, my, my playground was this old 1890s machine shop. But I was probably only about five or six years old when we first moved here. And I would just get wheeled up and sat down next to the people doing the machines so that they could watch me. So the, the machinists that were working here were also my babysitters. So I got a chance to learn a lot and use a lot of the equipment. Uh, the original part of the building dates back to 1890s. And as time went on, of course, they expanded. So they expanded into maybe like the, the mid-1920s, 19, late 20, 1920s, when they were finally done. And what was the main purpose of this building originally? Or? Originally, it was a company making uh, products for lamp lights, for, for gas lamps. But uh, when electricity came into play, they went out of business. Then it was bought by the uh, piping company and they manufactured uh, cast iron pipe and pipe fittings. Yeah, this is the, uh, the newer section built back in the 1920s. This is the uh, a machine shop area. It had a lot of the shapers, gear hobbers, um, uh, all those types of machines, the lathes, screw machines and stuff like that, drill presses, uh, milling machines. And back down farther, when you go down farther, you'll see the, uh, the foundry area. And that's where we poured um, aluminum and cast iron. It was actually a fairly big operation. The, the building itself is uh, 35,000 square feet. Uh, that's with including all the outside buildings as well. Uh, the railroad bed used to go right through the building, down over onto the back through the, 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 the middle section over here. And um, basically it's, we, we had on our side probably like maybe 20 people or more working uh, per day. But when it was the old pipe founder, they probably had a, a hundred or more working per day. There's quite a few outbuildings. I don't know exactly what most of them were used for, but I do have plans. And uh, it looks like there was still lots of machines. There was parts and supplies and like uh, sand for the foundry was held in there. And a couple of the buildings were used for all the foundry patterns. Oh yeah, my father's, uh, the, one, the one machinist my father had from the beginning. Uh, he was there right from the 50s probably, all the way up until early 2000 something. And um, that's when we started slowly closing down. Uh, like I said, this is old machine shop. A lot of the machines are over 100 years old. They still work, but they can't put out things as fast and as simple as some of these new machines do and these companies, even in a smaller location than we have. Yeah. Um, so, so pretty much you can fire up any of these machines in here or you have, have you tried to turn on a lot of them? Oh yeah, we, it's, it's some of the machines that I dug out from all the junk that was around them, we fired right up, everything works great. A little bit of oil, wipe them down, they perform just as good as the day they were put in. Yeah. That's awesome. This is one of my father's first machines. Uh, it's from the 1920s. And so I guess it was kind of used when he was using it in the 40s. And it still runs today. We still have it in our shop now.
the focus in this building at that point? Was it mainly just the manufacturing for printing and things? At that point, we, it was just for uh, the print cylinders and gears for the printing companies. We were just, that was just our only focus and all the car stuff just went up into the attic. Yeah, I mean, I, I grew up here, so that stuff's been up in the attic since we moved here in the 70s. And uh, it's great to actually now go in there in a different mindset because I'm not just running around there and I find a little, you know, find something on the floor, like a little rock or something. Now I'm finding, you know, what car part is this for? When did my father get this? Was it for a car he was putting together? Or was it for a customer? Yeah, we're interested in, you know, kicking around the idea of the machine shop becoming a museum that people can walk through. Um, the, with the cars, we might set up like a little section where it's like a, a little speed shop, like a, it looks like an old school speed shop. And you can walk in, you see the car sitting there, and you see some of the parts that are left over hanging up on the walls. And, you know, it, it just to bring people back to a different time. And to honor my father for, you know, the stuff, he bought this stuff a long time ago, and it's, it's, it's family history. Uh, it was a lot of fun to, to explore because my, uh, my father unfortunately passed away in 2018 and my son was actually born, my first son was born the day before. So my father unfortunately died, uh, I never had a chance to meet his first grandson. So it was upsetting to me, but I've come to terms with it and the way I've done that is by exploring the old shop, going through some of my old father's history because it enables me to connect more to him and then I can kind of remember some of the stories he used to tell me because I see something I'm like oh I remember a story my dad told me about this or I remember a story my dad told me about that and then I can bring my son in too eventually and tell him the stories so that he can kind of get to know him even though he's gone. My father you know he misses, missed the racing missed, missed all that type of stuff you know he did go to races and watch races on TV but he didn't have anything that was his again, so he wanted something. So he ended up buying a, a, a sprint car and put his name on it. He brought it to a couple of car shows. We got it running. He drove it through our parking lot, down the street, turned around up onto another street and came home. No cares in the world. <laughs> he was probably 70 years old at that point. Yeah. And um, he then bought another car for us to put together together. Uh, but we uh, never got a chance to get to that yet. Unfortunately, we will, but um, when my son gets a little bit older, we will readdress that. Maybe I'll, him and I will have time together, father and son time. Yeah, that's cool. You can kind of pass the, you know, so, so your grandfather was into racing, got your dad into it. Yeah, uh, yeah. His, like, up, up, your grandfather was into racing and his father before him was into racing. And, you know, I might not be that into racing as they both were, but it'd be nice to connect on that level since he's no longer around. It's in your DNA. <laughs> DNA, <laughs> my DNA.